Awesome, thank you. And you can be seated, boy. It's a blessing to see you here today. And well, this is just an exciting week and an exciting time as we uh, move now uh, ever closer toward Thanksgiving. And that's such a great day. And uh, we're looking forward to it. And on each uh, Thanksgiving week, we just move our uh, our midweek service up till Tuesday. And that gives people a little bit extra time to get prepared or travel. We'll be leaving uh, in the morning and we're going to Virginia. We'll be there Thursday, be back Friday. And uh, boy, I'm going to work in another dinner on Saturday. And uh, mom's going to have dinner for us then. So I like those two dinner holidays. That's a blessing, isn't it? And uh, so I'm going to enjoy that as much as I can. And I know many of you are busy and getting ready. Miss Phyllis, she's leaving tomorrow. She's going down to Lexington area and, uh, and uh, Owensboro and go down there and see some family. And, and, uh, and so it, it's a good time of the year to be uh, together. And we're thankful for you coming out and being here and being with us today. And uh, anybody have school tomorrow? No school tomorrow. Wow, that's exciting, isn't it? And uh, so a good start to the week, and uh, uh, so uh, it's just a blessing. We're thankful that you are able to come out and be a part of our services here uh, on this day, and uh, just, uh, just good to see you. We had a great Sunday, and we enjoyed that, and uh, thankful for all the Lord did, and I worked in hearts and, and spoke to hearts and lives, how many people were obedient people. And uh, we don't have a bulletin tonight. We didn't put a bulletin together and we didn't do a prayer list, but we want you to be in prayer for people. And we've got folks that are under the weather and not well and sick and traveling and different things. And, and uh, so don't forget them. Just remember folks and families. But it is a joy to have the opportunity to be here tonight. We don't always have special guests for uh, our Thanksgiving service, but we have a pilgrim here today. And uh, Cameron is a pilgrim. Can, Cameron, can you stand up back there for me? Can you stand? Look at that. Turn around so everybody can see you. Uh, turn around so everybody can see you. They want to see you. <clears throat> so, so it's good to have a pilgrim here for Thanksgiving. She, she came all the way from England on the Mayflower, didn't you? Huh? No? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I would have never known that. Uh, but uh, we're glad you're here, too. Amen. And uh, Rusty said uh, Mariah's already got everything washed, put away, folded, everything ready for the baby. And uh, so uh, so she, she's trying to get all that done while she can, can't she? Because uh, it won't, won't be much longer. Amen. So it's just a good place to be. We're glad you're here. And on Thanksgiving, our uh, midweek service, we, we try to do something uh, just a little different every year. Uh, than most of our normal services. And so for the past, past few years, we've given you a little card uh, ahead of time, and we've asked you to put some things on that card for us. And uh, we are, uh, we're going to look at those cards, as many of them as we can, and, and we sing about counting our blessings, and, and that's what we want to do tonight. We just want to count our blessings together, and uh, we'd like to uh, just uh, be able to give everybody as much time as you'd like to be able to stand and talk and say everything, and, and I know our time would go very quickly if we tried to do that, but, uh, but these cards help express some of those things, and, and we can look at them together, but we ask you to put on those cards uh, something you're thankful for, and then we ask you to maybe just put a reference to a verse of Scripture or a passage of Scripture that is one that uh, you think about often maybe when you think about thankfulness and gratitude. And uh, so we're, we want to look at a few of those things tonight and, uh, and just ask the Lord to minister to our hearts. And uh, I enjoy them uh, looking at them, and, and I enjoy this service. I always look forward to it. And uh, I go through the cards, and I just stick them on my Bible wherever uh, the references uh, were. So uh, I'll find the first one. I believe it's in the book of Psalms. <clears throat> and I'm not going to read the names on the cards. Some of them put names. Some of you put your name and others didn't. But uh, I won't read the names. But I do want to read some of the things that we find here. And uh, this one uh, <clears throat> this one was uh, uh, Psalm 23. Someone put Psalm 23. And that's a great psalm, isn't it? And uh, we know that, that was, uh, that's one of the trinity of psalms that make up the shepherd's psalms, Psalm 22, 23, and 24. And 
<clears throat> Psalm 22 is uh, the good shepherd giving his life for the sheep. And uh, <clears throat> we know that Psalm 23 is the great shepherd who uh, watches over the sheep and cares for them. And then Psalm 24 is the chief shepherd coming again, promising to come again for his flock. And uh, Psalm 23 is just one of those precious psalms that we think of so often. <coughs> and one of those passages where it's just best to read it out loud, isn't it? Uh, it really is, because it seems like you can just put the right emphasis on things when you do that. Uh, psalm 23, uh, we believe David wrote the psalm, penned down the psalm from uh, the leadership of the Spirit of God uh, and uh, things that God was doing in his heart and life. And uh, he begins it in such a personal way. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. And if you're saved by the grace of God, he's your shepherd. He's your shepherd. And, uh, you know, sometimes the sheep may not have seen the shepherd, but the shepherd always sees the sheep, doesn't he? He always has his eye on the sheep. And sometimes it may seem like we can't get our eye on him but he's watching us and sometimes it seems like through the circumstances and situations of life that maybe he's he's maybe wandered away from us but he doesn't we wander away sometimes but he never does uh, and so we thank the Lord for our shepherd the Lord is my shepherd <clears throat> he said I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's, that's a great statement, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, I like that thought. Uh, he, he talks about uh, the valley. Uh, you know, we think about that, I think, sometimes. And we think about the valley of death. But it's not. That's not what he says, is it? It's the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow. You know, a shadow is not the real thing, is it? That's right. It's not. It's just the shadow of something. If you have a big, beautiful tree and it's sunny out, you can find some shade in the shadow of that tree. But that's not the tree itself. It's just the shadow it casts. And, you know, when you're saved by the grace of God, uh, you will never, never be separated from God ever again. And that's what death is. It's separation. Separation. And, uh, you, you know, these physical bodies are going to die. They're gonna, we're going to experience death. If we all live the course of our life and the Lord doesn't come soon and we expect him to come soon, we're going to one by one enter eternity through the door of death. But there'll never be one moment in that whole process where I am not in and with the Lord. Mm -hmm. To be absent from the body is present with the Lord, he said. Absent, present. You can't, there's no way you can measure the, the, the distance between those two. And uh, the psalmist says, I'm going, to make, I'm going to someday walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And death's going to cast a shadow on me. But I'll never, I'll never not be with the shepherd. I'm going to have eternal life. Eternal life. I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And, uh, and that's a great, great passage of Scripture. And uh, I've told you all a, a lot about goodness and mercy, haven't I? I've told you that story a lot where the visiting evangelist went and preached at this little country church. And, and uh, this one family wanted him to come for dinner after church on Sunday. And, uh, I mean, it was a bib overhauls kind of church, you know, way up in the country. And, and, uh, and so they... Uh, he went with them, and boy, this little lady, uh, she brought out a big old uh, <clears throat> uh, cast iron skillet full of chicken. She had just, you know, that chicken was walking around eating there earlier in the morning, but now it was, they were going to eat it. And, uh, and so uh, it was a big pan of biscuits and just all the things that go with it. And boy, that preacher just enjoyed that meal. Then afterwards, the old 
farmer, he country man, he was so proud of all that he had, and he didn't have much, but he was proud of it and thankful for it. And he wanted the preacher to go look at all of his things and look at his animals and these things. And, and as they came out of the, uh, the, the house and the old screen door slammed and they walked down the, uh, the, the steps, out from under the porch came two little beagle dogs. And uh, they got right in behind that farmer, and he just, everywhere he went, they went right with him. And when he stopped, they stopped. And when he went, he went. And uh, the preacher said something about them. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, uh, he said, that's my dogs. He said, that one's goodness, and that one's mercy. And he said, everywhere I go, they follow me around. And he said, I named them that because the Lord's my shepherd. And surely, goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. And uh, I love to hear that story. That's such a good story. But this person, they wrote the 23rd Psalm down as a great passage of Scripture. And they wrote, you know, uh, they wrote, I'm thankful for my salvation and my family and my friends. And, uh, you know, we, we thank the Lord we can be saved. And I'm thankful that family and friends that know the Lord are things that we can go to eternity with, aren't they? They're things we can go to people we can go to heaven with and you can't say that about anything else in the world but you can that and so we're thankful for uh, our family we're thankful <clears throat> for our friends i know there's another one here in psalms that i saw and and this uh this card uh, this uh, there was so several uh psalms that uh, and verses of scripture that were written down on this one and uh and uh i just uh i just uh, looked at uh, some of them and and I, I like the, this uh, reference to Psalm 106 and verse 1. And uh, this psalm uh, says, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 106, verse number 1. And that's a great psalm as you read that psalm. It's, it's several verses long. Uh, and uh, you get a history lesson when you read that psalm. Uh, because you have recounted there how God was always merciful toward the children of Israel, how he was always good to them, and the things that he wanted them to do, and the areas of obedience he desired for their life, he did that because he wanted some good things to happen to them. And uh, he, was, he, he is good, he, his mercy endureth forever, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 106 and verse number 1. And they have several other references. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. And Hebrews 10, 25. Those are all uh, great uh, scripture references that, uh, that, are, that give us a reason to be grateful. Give us a reason to be thankful. And uh, they've written, I'm thankful for God's gift, free gift of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for his mercy and grace that he shows me every day. I, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, thought, isn't it, that we have the mercy and grace of God, the salvation that we have uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, they write about being thankful for their earthly father and uh and and uh, uh then thankful for their family and uh, we're thankful for thankful for their church and uh, that's just like our family isn't it and uh, so we we praise the lord for uh for these wonderful things that we have that we can uh, we can be thankful for psalm 106 and verse number one and uh, let's see where else we got here to go to this one is in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that's one of my favorite books in the Bible. And I say that about every other book, don't I, I think. And especially if you're in my Bible college class, I, uh, we're going through the Old Testament or we're surveying uh, the New Testament about every book we study. I say that's one of my favorite books in the Bible. But Ecclesiastes is a great book. It's... Uh, it's the book uh, that uh, Solomon penned down. Uh, Solomon was the wisest man on earth apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he didn't always live that way. He was one of these guys that was, uh, didn't have a lot of common sense, didn't he? <laughs> he uh, made some choices and decisions early in his life that he regretted later on. Uh, 
but uh, he was a wise man. And this little book of Ecclesiastes is, is such a great practical book for our life. And uh, this reference that uh, this person has placed on their card is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Now, I'm not going to tell you who these cards are, but this is a teenager that wrote this card. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and they put down verse 11. It says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. It's an interesting verse, isn't it? And uh, I like that per part. He hath made everything beautiful in his time, didn't he? His time. And uh, that's, a, that's a great thought. That's a good truth. And uh, this card, the individual put, I'm thankful for just uh, the life that I have. Uh, and uh, it talk, uh, they talk about uh, that uh, they, they believe that Jesus Christ is coming again. And that uh, while uh, they have life, they want, to, uh, they want to serve him and live for him. And so that's a great thought, isn't it, from a teenager and uh, that card. So we have something there to be thankful for, for sure. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. That's a great passage. That's the to everything. Uh, there is a season passage. And, uh, and so that's good. Amen. Let's see what else we've got here. Here's one in the book of Lamentations. Lamentations is a tremendous book. It's not a very big book. <clears throat> Five chapters. Uh, we believe Jeremiah was the off the penman who uh, wrote down the the uh, five chapters that we have as the book of Lamentations. Uh, Lamentations chapter one uh, is a record of what it was like to be alive during the uh, invasion of, of, of the Babylonians. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, led the armies of Babylon into Judah and Jerusalem and uh, raided them three different times. He was, and the nation of Babylon, a chastening rod. That's what they were. God raised them up. He made them powerful. They, they reached the pinnacle of power in the world, and they did it because God w was going to use them to discipline his disobedient people. And he did. And, uh, and we know that this is the time period when uh, Daniel and his three friends were carried back to Babylon, and they were uh, there in captivity and all the things that happened with Daniel. Those three young men, the fiery furnace and uh, the image and idol out in the plains of Dura, all those things happened. And uh, the handwriting on the wall when Belshazzar became the king and God said, I found you wanting. And uh, that very night, the Babylonians fell to the Medians and the Persians who had created an alliance and they defeated them. But this is that period of time. Jeremiah... Uh, was not uh, taken away here. Uh, he is, he's giving us a commentary. He says in Lamentations 1, verse 1, How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? Now you remember what it was like after these three invasions when you go back and read the books of Nehemiah and Ezra. That's how the city was. There were no walls no gates, no temple. Everything had been destroyed. Everything had been leveled. There was nothing left. It was, it was, it, you, you've seen pictures of what it was like in Europe after World War II. Just rubble everywhere. That's what it was like. And uh, Jeremiah said, How is she become as a widow, she that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces, how has she become tributary? Jeremiah asked the question. But this verse, this verse, listen, in verse 12 of chapter 1, Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by, and behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger? I, just, I can see Jeremiah sitting on a rock beside the road, 
And the only people around are people who are leaving. They're fleeing. There's nowhere. There's nothing left. And he's the weeping prophet, isn't he? And his heart is broken and it's overflowing with tears. And he asked the question, doesn't it mean anything to anybody, the condition that, that we're in as a people? And, you know, I wonder sometimes, it, does it mean anything to anybody, the condition of our nation, our nation, where we are, so far away from God? And Lamentations is a tremendous book. This person wrote uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23, 24, and 25. And that, it's wonderful because even in the midst of all of this tragedy, Jeremiah found time in the midst of that to be thankful. If he could do it, we can do it. And he says in verse 23, uh, well, let's back up to verse 22. Uh, it says, uh, uh, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. And uh, even in the middle of all those things, Jeremiah didn't lose sight of who his God was. God was the same. The people had 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 grown cold and indifferent to God but God had never changed God was the same and God's the same today and uh, and so we can be thankful uh, for who and what he is uh, this individual writes I'm thankful for his faithfulness for God's faithfulness and uh, he is faithful to our hearts and lives <clears throat> I want to move over to the New Testament and uh, we have several other cards that folks turned in and I've got one in the Gospel of Matthew uh, Matthew chapter number 16. <laughs> Matthew chapter 16. <clears throat> and this, this person has put down Matthew 16:28. And, uh, you know, that's an interesting verse, and you may first of all think that seems a little bit odd, maybe when we're looking at verses of thankfulness and great gratitude, but really it isn't, and especially not if you write, read what they wrote on the card. But we know that uh, this passage of Scripture here in Matthew chapter number 16, uh, that uh, the Lord is... Uh, is telling his disciples again, as he did many times, that he came into the world to die on the cross and that he was going to be buried and that he was going to rise again from, uh, from the dead. And then he says to them in verse 28, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death uh, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so here's a passage that references the coming again of the Lord. The coming again of the Lord. And this person put, I'm thankful, I'm thankful uh, uh, for my family, that I have my family, that I'm with my family. And uh, then they put, but I'm also thankful that God can come and take us whenever he wants to. He can come and take us home when he wants to. And so that person was blessed by that thought that the Lord's coming again. And they were thankful to think about the promise of Jesus Christ's return. And uh, so that's a blessing. Amen. That's something we can be thankful for, that the Lord is coming again. And uh, let's see. The other, next one I have is in the Gospel of John. John's uh, Gospel, and this is uh, John chapter 3, uh, verse 16, is the scripture reference they they placed on here, I'm thankful the individual wrote for their salvation. And John 3.16, of course, is uh, a verse of Scripture that you probably may be one of the very first ones you ever memorized, John 3.16. And uh, we know that it talks about God's love, how He so loved us. That little word, so, uh, S-O, that word, that word is uh, a word of uh, 
uh, focus. It, how much and how did you love us? And the Bible said so much and in such a way that he gave us his perfect son. He gave us his perfect son. <clears throat> not, that, not just that his son might come and perform miracles or raise the dead or heal the sick or feed the hungry. He came and gave his son so that his son would suffer and die in my place. And become my sin. And uh, you think about <clears throat> you think about someone maybe uh, who uh, who did something very hurtful to someone that you love, and uh, and then uh, you think about you think about giving one of your children to help that person that hurt you, loved ones, and that's exactly what God did, isn't it? He gave His Son. For us who were his enemies that caused his suffering and caused his death for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life he so gave and you know we're thinking about giving thanks and and uh, and we have thanksgiving and we know that God gave his son and uh Evan made reference to 2 Corinthians 9.15 and someone else had placed that as one of the scripture references on their card and that scripture speaks about God's unspeakable gift. And it doesn't mean we ought not speak about it. It's not what it means. It means that if we spoke about Jesus Christ and what he means to us for the rest of our earthly life, we would never be able to say enough about it. That's what it means. His gift is unspeakable. If we should speak the rest of our life, we could never say enough for what Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us. And uh, so John 3.16, they were thankful, thankful for their salvation. And I uh, have another card in the Gospel of John, and this one was in John chapter 16. John chapter 16. The Gospel of John 16 and here again, we're in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Again, he's talking about his death, his burial. He's talking about his resurrection. And uh, he makes uh, uh, some statements in here. And uh, this individual, uh, Mariah's not here, so I'm going to name her name. This is her card, Rusty. And, and you'll, you'll understand why she's using these verses and why she's thinking about this. And I'm going to edit this, Rusty. This is way too mushy and gooey toward you. I, I, don't, I don't want you to get the big head. <laughs> or maybe I ought to give it to you so that so you'll not forget. You can just put it in your Bible, and okay? But it is. She's sweet. And she's, uh, she says, one thing, uh, one thing to write down is very hard to choose but I'm going to pick something that covers many, many, many areas of my life. She said, I'm thankful for my husband that God has given me and all the ways God uses him in my life. I have a blessing. And uh, she said, it's because of him that I began attending church and that I came to know the Lord. And is that true, Rusty? You, you helped get her uh, to the Lord, helped bring her to the Lord. Amen. That's a blessing. And uh, she, uh, she writes about being thankful for her beautiful daughter and soon-to-be son. And uh, she writes uh, that she's thankful, grateful for you, uh, that you're willing to work hard uh, so that you can have the things that you need and also that uh, she can finish her college. And she's been working hard on that, hasn't it? But, but I know the finances run out, didn't they? And, uh, and uh, so you've been having to pay for that finishing up out of your pocket, uh, but uh, uh, she said, I could not have been blessed with a better husband uh, to raise uh, my family with and serve the Lord with, and so uh, that's, a, that's a blessing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, John 16, she put down verses 21 <clears throat> and 22, and you'll understand why she did that. Uh, you know, she's, she's ready to have a baby, <laughs> and that's, that's on her mind. And she put down, a woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. 
and uh, that's on her heart, and she remembers what it was like having that little girl, but but not like she did right afterwards. Now, and now she's thankful that the Lord's going to bless him with a son, isn't she? And uh, verse 22 says, And ye now, uh, ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice in your joy. No man taketh from you. That's the way it ought to be. God wants us to have a joy that no man taketh from us. Not the world, not the flesh, not the devil. Nobody ought to be able to take your joy away. But what happens every day by 10 o'clock on the job? <laughs> Someone's tried to take away your joy, haven't they? So don't let them do that. No man can take it away. You can give it up, but nobody can take it. So that's a great card, Rusty. I, I appreciated that. That was a blessing when I read it. Amen. I've got some others here, and I've got here. Here's one of those references where I have uh, I have two cards, and they turn both turned in the same references. Romans six twenty three is the reference here. <clears throat> the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh, one of the cards uh, writes, "I'm thankful that Jesus died." Uh, uh, for all sinners and for my salvation. I'm thankful uh, for Jesus Christ saving my soul so I don't have to spend an eternity in hell. I can spend it in heaven. And uh, that was another teenager's card that wrote that. That's a blessing. Romans 6.23. And uh, the other card, uh, again, the same scripture reference. I'm thankful my Redeemer uh, means everything to me, and I'm thankful for the Word of God. And... Uh, Certainly, that's something that uh, that we can always be thankful to for. When we when we are at our lowest, we can open up the Bible and we can find help, can't we? We can find help. There's strength and and what we need in the Word of God, and so we thank the Lord for it. Uh, Romans chapter uh, number eight. Uh, Romans 8 and verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called uh, according to his purpose. Uh, that's a great passage of scripture, great promise uh, for those that just are, uh, are in love with the Lord and serving him and yielded to his will. And, uh, and uh, I don't know who this was. They didn't put the name on the card, but they've written, I'm thankful that I began uh, coming to this church thankful that I began coming to this church and uh, and Romans 8 28 is their scripture reference and so we're thankful <clears throat> we're thankful for that and uh, Galatians Galatians chapter number five and verses 22 and 23 these are verses that give us the fruits of the spirit and uh, I'm thankful that as a born-again believer uh, I have something more now in me than what I was before I was saved, aren't you? Because I didn't have a whole lot to offer people before I met the Lord. But now I have Jesus Christ in me. He's our hope, Christ in you. And uh, in him I have all that he is. I have all that he is in my life. And, and as I yield my life to him, he can be seen in me and through me. And I'm glad it's something more than what I am or what I have to give. Uh, we have the light of Christ in us. We, we have the, the, the Savior, the, the one who's the difference maker. And our life now can produce a fruit unlike anything we could have produced before we met the Lord. And uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, uh, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. And uh, by, the, uh, by the help of the Lord, may we want to live Spirit-filled lives lives producing the fruits of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And we can as we yield our hearts and lives to Him. So the fruits of the Spirit. And um, uh, this, uh, this card uh, they've written down, uh, can't just write one thing on here, uh, but I'm thankful for, 
for the, for, the, for the Lord Jesus Christ, number one, and my family. And that's the right order, isn't it? That's the right order to have them in. And uh, that's, the way, that's the way we'll be what we ought to be for our family when he's number one in our hearts and lives. He has that top place. So uh, those are good. Uh, I have another one that's from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Those are precious verses that have to do with salvation. Uh, by the grace of God, through faith in Christ. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. Every word is inspired in our Bible. And I'm thankful that God took the time uh, to just uh, put in a semicolon and put that little part. And that not of yourselves what faith even faith he gave me even faith he gave me and uh and so uh, it's the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast and uh, we're thankful for that uh this uh says i'm thankful for my savior that i know i'm saved and and that can't uh, be taken away thankful for god's grace my family church health friends all these things, and uh, it's all because of the Lord, and it's all because of Jesus Christ, all by the grace of God, every good and every perfect thing that we have. It's all because of Him. Ephesians 5, 20, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20, and this verse is a, is a great uh, reminder for us that, that giving thanks is not based on emotions or feelings or suggestion. It's a, it's a command to be a part of an obedient believer's life. Uh, verse 20 of Ephesians 5, giving thanks always for all things. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so, so that's, a, that's a, a great reminder for us that, uh, that thanksgiving and an attitude of gratitude is... Uh, is something that begins with obedience and uh, surrendering of our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. Uh, in the book of Philippians, I had two scripture references from the same uh, verse and then one uh, that is uh, different but all in the same chapter, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. I have two from Philippians 4.13. And that's a great verse. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And, uh, you know, there's things in life we don't think we can get through or live through, but the Lord gives us the strength to do it, doesn't he? And we can stand on him. We can rely upon him. And uh, so... Uh, so we're thankful for that. These cards write, uh, they write, I'm thankful for my children. Uh, and uh, then uh, this card says, uh, uh, a godly church, a personal Savior who is always with me in my life, who strengthens me always through all things. So, so good cards uh, there with those verses on them. Verses, uh, verse 13 of chapter 4. And then I have one for verse 19 of chapter 4. And uh, that's uh, a great promise as well. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And uh, so what a great promise. And this uh, person writes, I'm thankful uh, for the Lord providing all my family's needs. Uh, even when I have little faith, he always provides. And I'm thankful that... He is faithful, isn't he? We looked at that verse of Scripture. Even when we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. And uh, so a great, great verse and a good encouraging verse. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was yours, yes. Yeah, Philippians 4.13. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> oh, mercy. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Ma'am, I tell you what, it just goes to show you if you do it the Lord's way, it'll turn out all right, won't it? Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. Well, I have just a, one more or so here. Uh, this one is from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And uh, that's a good verse. You probably have that marked in your Bible, or you should. It, it's a great promise for us, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's a good thing, isn't it? He hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And uh, this individual put on thankful for the freedom that we have. And uh, we ought to be thankful for that, and we ought to make the most out of it while we can, can't, shouldn't we? Because uh, it's something certainly that we ought not take for granted. Amen. Here's another. It's Second Timothy two two. Second Timothy chapter two. And uh, verse number two. It's a good verse. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And uh, that's a great uh, scripture. And uh, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you who wrote this one. They're not here either. That's Rebecca, Anna's daughter, Rebecca Spurlock. And uh, she put, she said, I'm, I'm thankful that me, uh, Rachel, and Jackie started going to church. And then years later, our mom has come to church. And by God's will, uh, we are all serving God together. And uh, isn't that a blessing? <laughs> uh, so that's a, that's a blessing. Amen. We picked them two little old girls up, those twins, when they weren't four or five, I think, probably. Uh, the, about the second summer I, we were here at the church for Vacation Bible School, we ran across them. And uh, they they had already gotten thrown out of two Bible schools that year. And had tried to send them to two Bible schools. And one of them is a church just like us. Uh, and they sent them home. They, they didn't keep them. <laughs> said, we can't do anything. We can't do anything with them. And, uh, and we just about didn't do anything with them. Uh, I think the very first day they were here, you know, Rachel... Kathy's daughter, Rachel Salmon, she's as timid, you know, and she can be. And somehow she got linked up with them for the first part of that night. One of them bit a hunk out of her, just, I mean, laid it on her. And, uh, <laughs> and so, but, we, you know, we decided we're going to just show them love and see if that makes a difference. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, it did after a while, didn't it? It made a difference. And uh, so, so that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't have any more cards, but I do appreciate folks turning in those cards. Isn't it, uh, isn't it encouraging to just hear how other people are feeling and thinking? And I, I do. I like that so much. And uh, the verses of Scripture that are near and dear to their heart, how it helps them and how it helps you and me as well. Uh, but we do have just a couple minutes here tonight. Maybe someone, before we do go, might just have something. I, I appreciate it uh, if you do, just to like to share something, just... Go ahead before we finish up. Anyone tonight before we go? <coughs> well, we're thankful to the Lord for our church family. And uh, we really are. And uh, for, for your families and uh, all of you. And we could take time to go around the room and 
and try to tell folks how much we're thankful and grateful unto the Lord for who you are, what you are, and what you've done to help my family and I. And uh, and we're thankful. I'm, I'm you know, I'm thankful. Uh, some of us have been together on a Tuesday night before Thanksgiving before, and maybe tonight this is the first time you've been a part of us here. Uh, and there's some of you here today I'm just so thankful for. I'm, Missy, I'm glad your mom and dad are here tonight, aren't you? It's a blessing. And Karen, I'm thankful you're here and not and that you're able to be here. That's what I'm thankful for. And uh, I'm, I, I appreciate Julia being here tonight. I'm thankful for her. And uh, she's a mom with two little, two little bo- a little boy and a girl. And that lady right back there, sh- sh- that'll be encouraging. And, uh, and uh, the Lord can help you. He'll, he's going to help you. And I'm thankful, thankful for you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else tonight have something before we finish up? Well, I hope everybody's gone to the grocery store already. I wouldn't envy you doing that tomorrow. Amen. Probably picked over, isn't it? So, so, uh, so anyway, I, I just hope you, to our our family, to yours, you have a great, a great holiday, and uh, enjoy the facts of these truths that we thought about here tonight. These are real, and they're forever and eternal. And uh, this life is a fleeting thing, and uh, it's here and gone. And it can be of any type of quality, good or bad, and some of both. But what we have in the Lord is forever. It is eternal. And uh, ultimately, we're all headed that know the Lord to that place where we can be with him forever. And uh, so that, that's, that's where we, uh, that's, that's the foundation upon which we begin to look at everything else. And we can, be th- we can give thanks in all things. If we, if we stand there, don't we? If we stand on that and look from that place, then we can give thanks in all things. And uh, so we're, we're blessed. We're blessed. Amen. Well, let's stand together tonight. We're going to have a word of prayer and, and just uh, be dismissed tonight. I hope everyone has a good, safe holiday as you travel and out and around and about. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the Lord's Day. Things now will start gearing up for Christmas, and that'll be here now is what we'll be thinking about and talking about and looking at. We've got adult choir programs, children's programs. Uh, we've got a recital with all kinds of Christmas music and so many different things. That'll be wonderful. Our church Christmas dinner the first Sunday in December. And uh, so all these things are coming up fast. But uh, let's just look to the Lord tonight and have a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you tonight for your grace, for your goodness, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. As sure as we're standing together here in this building, right now tonight, I believe, Lord, in eternity, someday, everyone that has received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior in this building tonight will stand together someday in your presence forever. And Lord, that's reality. And this world is just a fleeting moment, just, uh, just a, a journey we're passing through from, uh, from the cradle where we were born and laid into eternity. And so, Lord, tonight, I pray you'll encourage hearts. And Lord, I know there's folks tonight and families that here at a time of the year when we count our blessings and give thanks, they're going through difficult trials. They're going through t- tough times. And uh, things aren't uh, looking uh, as positive in their hearts and lives as they'd like for them to be. Uh, But, Lord, I know tonight that we can still have a thankful heart because if we know you as our Savior, uh, Lord, we're never going to spend one moment in hell. And, Lord, that that was where we were headed to for all eternity without end before we come to know you as our Savior. And, uh, Lord, uh, we pray tonight for folks who uh, are, are going through trials and tribulations and so many different things, families uh, being, uh, Lord, uh, bombarded by the world, the flesh, and the devil. And, uh, Lord, we know that uh, our, our bodies are frail and, and Lord, they're weak. And, uh, Lord, that eventually we're going to lay them down in the ground where they came from. But, Lord, we just thank you tonight. You are a living Savior. You are a risen Savior. You are a victorious Savior. 
Uh, your word is true. Your promises are true. You've never failed to come through on a promise, even once. And so, Lord, uh, we know that, uh, that God in eternity, uh, Lord, uh, will we'll have and possess, God, all these wonderful promises that you've given us. And so that's our hope. And so we thank you tonight that we can meet together as we have and be encouraged by how you work in other people's hearts and lives and the scriptures, Lord, that are such a blessing and a strength to us. And so we just ask your blessings on all these families tonight and those who are able to come, that you would just comfort them and be near to them. And may God, uh, in a moment, somewhere throughout this week, they'll just rejoice and be thankful that, Lord, if they know you as their Savior, uh, that, God, they have something eternal that can never be taken away. And uh, we'll just thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.